Hey y'all, it's Michael, and so this is my last video for Asian Pacific Island Heritage Month double review. The reason why I say the last two is because currently right now I'm I'm going through 1Q84, which I'm by Haruki Murakami, which I'm really enjoying. Um, I'm almost done with book one, so. <sighs> Because during this, while I'm uploading this in the previous video, we're going to be at uh, Momocon, which I'm super excited. So that'll be my weekend vlog. I'm really excited because I, I, I love, love Momocon. It's so much fun. So much fun. The first book is Please Look After Mom by Kyuk Sun Shin, translated by Ji Yoon Kim, narrated by Mark Bramhall, Samantha Kwan, Janet Song, and Bruce Turk. This is from Korea. I first heard of this book going around. It was... I believe it was like really popular, like one of the best sellers. Now, this book takes four chapters um, and it's basically about a mom who goes missing. And then we get different perspectives of the four people and we basically find out who this mom is. And that's all I can tell you about it because without giving too much away. <laughs> like, it's literally them just literally searching for their mom. This book is really interesting because the way it's written. Some chapters are written in second verse. It's using the pronoun you, so saying you as in me, the reader. There is a weird part where it's like third person, but its use is really different and interesting, so I did enjoy about that part. The downside with using you for me personally is that sometimes it can really pull you out of the story. And there were some parts where it was like you and I said, uh, but then the next chapter would be in third person and then the next one after that would be in you. So I don't think it transitioned that well. I didn't hate this book, it's just that I wasn't really excited about it. Like I understood all the themes that it was saying like with the number and about relationships with um, mo with your parents, all of that, like, I, I got it. And I think this would make a good book club book because there are a lot of topics to talk about. I, I was just like, oh, okay. Like, I, I think, eh. So I gave that, um, I gave it two stars out of five. All right, the next one is The Garden of Evening Mist by Tan Tuan Eng, narrated by Anna Bentick. Okay, so I read his other novel. Well, I finished half of it. For some odd reason, I didn't finish it, which was really weird, but I read half of it, which was The Gift of Rain. That book was really good. I was really enjoying it, and I don't know why I didn't finish it, but that book was really cool because it had like a lot of um, like martial arts, which I really enjoyed. And so this book was really different. This was actually long listed for a Man Booker Prize. That's how I first heard about it. The writing is really nice. I really enjoy it. And I don't know if because, um, this is like a quick side story, but uh, from where I grew up, would it be a village? It, it'd be, uh, it's a village. I don't, it's definitely not a city. Well, would it be a town? I don't know if it's considered a town or a village, but I'm gonna say village. In my mom's uh, village town, it's in the mountains and it's like a lot of green, greenscapes. It's literally in the mountains. It's a long drive to the nearest city. What I really enjoyed about his writing um, is that, the reason why I'm talking about my childhood is I'm gonna wait for it, I'm gonna correlate everything, is that he knows how to, this author really knows how to convey smell and that is going to sound really weird and the author's describing what's going on with the scene for some odd reason and because this takes place in Malaya in the mountainside this is about a judge who is going to retirement and it's basically about her um, I wrote down her name uh, it is Young Lin and it's about her reminiscing about her past part where the author describing like the scene I smelt it and I felt it because it really did remind me of my home like I, I closed my eyes and I can I see it in my grandma's house there is this a water tower you can see the whole uh like the whole well village town and you can see like all the houses spaced out and there's so much green like i can see it right now and i remember going up there like one um like a few years ago i can feel the mist i can sense the dew drops on the grass and the leaves like i really felt it and similar to his other novel i i could really feel it like i i really enjoyed this author's writing and there are some beautiful passages um throughout the whole thing this book is mainly about of course like i said the judge and she's reminiscing because uh, without giving too much away she basically uh, um 
is trying to build her garden because this is a really interesting novel because it talks about the relationship with in Malaya with war with Japan the surrounding countries which a lot of books don't really talk about and so that was really interesting to find out about that but this made gardening seem so interesting and I'm not usually a person with like a green thumb but this made gardening really interesting. I don't know if it's a spoiler or not, but 25% of this book is about tattoos and oh my gosh, I enjoyed that portion so much. It was so fascinating because I was learning about tattoos in different culture and like what it symbolized and about the process of it was so fascinating. Like I, when I say fascinating, I was like, Wow, this is so cool. I, I really enjoyed it. This book really kept me engaged. I, From the beginning, I was just so really into it. And I think it's again like the combination of definitely great writing, great imagery. I oh, The imagery is so good. And the story is really engaging and just... It's just a, like I said with um, Kinder and Solitude, it's just a really nicely done novel. That's like all I can say. I would recommend it. I gave it four stars out of five. So yes, those are all the books that I read for Asian Pacific Island Heritage Month. I've said that word so many times now. I It rolls off my tongue. Um, I'm so excited for Momocon, so check out that vlog. Hopefully soon, whenever I get a chance to post it. It's gonna be a lot of footage. Um, I'm going to try to finish this soon. I'm definitely not gonna finish in time by the end of May, which I wanted to, unfortunately. But I'm trucking along. I'm really... I'm enjoying it. It's so I'm I'm roughly this much in, but I'm thinking to myself, where is the spaghetti? How come this character did not make spaghetti yet? No one made spaghetti. I want spaghetti. Bye.